All right. In just a few hours, House Democrats will hammer out the next steps toward an impeachment trial. Nancy Pelosi is finally letting go of the articles, but the question everyone's asking is why did she hold on to them in the first place? Lots of speculation about her motives. And Indiana Congressman Jim Banks joins us live with his thoughts. Congressman, thanks for joining us this morning. What do you think? What's what do you think is the speculation here? Well, it's hard to imagine uh, where do we go from here. This process has been a make it up as you go process all along. The Democrat conference, by and large, they want to get this out of their hands as fast as they can because they know it's a big loser for Democrats uh, in this next November election. So they're going to have a, I'm sure what will be a, um, an entertaining, I uh, wish I could be a fly on the wall conference meeting later today. And I imagine in that conference meeting, they're going to uh, do their best to get this moved on quickly so they never have to talk about it again. Do you, do you buy into this conspiracy theory that Nancy Pelosi has been trying to help Joe Biden's chances uh, of getting the nomination by pushing this thing right up until before Iowa and making sure that uh, Sanders and Warren are sitting in the Senate in Washington? Well, there's not a lot here that makes uh, much sense. So that does make sense. Uh, the longer that Nancy Pelosi can draw this out benefits Joe Biden. Uh, it's also a uh, opportunity for uh, Nancy Pelosi to get a little payback to the left wing of her party that pushed her down this path to begin with. You know, Nancy Pelosi didn't want to go down the impeachment route to begin with. She was the adult in the room in the beginning who said, let's not do this. This is bad for our party. It's bad for our country. Then all along, she went along with it, pushed in this direction by AOC and uh, the left wing of her party. So this is the opportunity for her to pay back uh, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, who represent that part of the party, and help her friend uh, Joe Biden by uh, keeping the senators in the Senate uh, right. stuck to their chairs uh, during the impeachment process in the Senate and uh, help her friend Joe uh, all the while. Well, let's take a look at a couple of polls here and see what the people think, because in this ABC News poll, 37 percent of people believe that uh, it's, you know, partisan politics there and 39 percent doing their constitutional duty by delaying the articles. There's one more poll. This is a Monmouth University poll that does show Joe Biden leading. This is the latest Iowa poll with 24 percent there, followed by Bernie Sanders, Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Warren. But, you know, I have to wonder if, OK, if this might be the reason why she was delaying them to try and help Joe Biden. Do you think that the people can read through that, though, the people who are going to be casting those votes? There's no question about it. I, I just got back to Washington, D.C. from Indiana, where I've spent uh, several days. And uh, what, what everyone says to me, what's loud and clear is we are sick and tired of this. Get this over with as fast as you can. This is like a bad. Congressman, let me cut in real quick, because, I mean, you've got there's a Quinnipiac poll that says that two thirds of the public wants to hear from John Bolton in this thing. Now, a lot of people do agree that this is a weak case by the Democrats, but they also say at the same time, it Biden stinks. Too. That, that John, and that's true too, but that people also say that it stinks that they're basically hiding John Bolton from the process. They think the Republicans uh, they, are. They want to hear from John Bolton. Bolton. They want to hear from Hunter Biden. I mean, the polls yeah. show that the American people want to get to the bottom of, they, they want to make sure that this never happens again. So call, call uh, people to testify that gets to the bottom of why the country was drugged through the mud. This is like a really bad uh, movie, that no sequel necessary, but Nancy Pelosi, uh, last week on Sunday, she said that uh, she's still reserving the opportunity to bring more impeachment articles. So she's going to force us to go back to the theater and watch the sequel of a bad movie um, over and over again. And the American people are sick of it. They, they never want to go through something like this again. And they're willing uh, to draw this out, to get to the bottom of it, uh, to make sure that that never happens to an, any other president moving forward. Before we let you go, we want to get your opinion on the response to the protests and everything that's been going on in Iran. And as you very well know, the president sent out a tweet a couple days ago, you know, in capital letters saying, do do not kill your protesters. Here's what some others are saying about this. This state of war that we are in, a responsibility of the present commander in chief. This is yet another example of collateral damage from the actions that have been taken in a provocative way by the president. This is a crisis totally of Donald Trump's making. Congressman, real quick, I mean, the Democrats have been saying for a while now that this has been Trump's fault. Some have been blaming the president for all of this. The Iranian people are risking their lives to protest in the streets to blame the regime for what's happening right now. What do you think about that? Well, this is an unbelievable situation. Democrats have a lot of egg on their face. The president has shown incredible wisdom and restraint 
toward the regime in Iran. All the while, the Iranian people are rising up and saying, we're sick and tired of the leaders, their current state of leadership. They want something that looks more like what we have in America. That's why uh, these protests are occurring to the, at the volume, the significance that they are. Uh, as, as American leaders, as members of Congress, um, as senators, as presidential candidates, we should all be applauding the Iranian protesters standing with them in their crusade for freedom and peace. Um, unfortunately, it took, it took Democrats a few days to figure out what the rest of us have known all along, that, uh, that the president has handled the situation so well, and uh, the American people see that as well, and we should stand side by side with the Iranian people. Congressman Banks, we, we really appreciate you joining us this morning. Great to be with you. Have a good